In this video, I'll say more about the phase plane and the types of behaviors that are possible for these types of differential equations. So first, let me say just a little bit about types of fixed points. Um, as before, we can have stable and unstable fixed points. In 2D, this comes with a twist, almost literally. So this might be a stable fixed point or an attractor would have a bunch of phase lines, um, excuse me, or trajectories in the phase plane. I should mention, right, all of these are going to be in some sort of a phase plane. So this would be an attracting fixed points. Trajectories are drawn towards it, getting closer and closer to this point. We could also have a situation, though, let's see if I can draw this. where trajectories spiral in to a fixed point. So this, let's see, let me draw the fixed points or the uh, equilibrium points in red. So here are these blue lines that are getting pulled in, it's stable, but um, there's a twist. One spirals in as one approaches this point. Then there are two other varieties. You can probably guess these. We could have a repelling equilibrium. Might look something like this. If you're exactly on the red dot, you stay there. But if you move off a little bit, you get pushed away. So this is like being at the top of a mountain. You move in any direction and away you go. And then we could also have something like this. So this is also unstable. If you fall off this mountain, you get you don't return to the top of the mountain. Right? So this is like being in the bottom of a valley. Here, you're at the top of a mountain, but somehow if you fall off that top, you don't just roll down the side, you spiral away from the mountain. So um, these are repellers, these are attractors. These are sometimes called sinks, and these sources, this terminology is a little more common in looking at two-dimensional differential equations. And one might call this a spiral sink and this a spiral source. Source because it's a source of lines. Lines are coming out of it. In any event, um, these are the fixed points for um, four different types of fixed points you can have for a differential equation of this form. What about the lotka volterra equation? We saw there that populations behaved uh, cyclically, cycled around. Um, is, are these cycles stable or unstable or something else? So um, we'll figure this out experimentally. Um, as usual, when we want to test something's stability, we uh, try iterating, or in this case, solving the differential equation for slightly different initial conditions. And when one does that on a, a phase plane like this, one often ends up with what's called a phase portrait. So um, perhaps like a portrait in art, it summarizes or highlights the key features, key qualitative features of a system. So here's the lotka volterra equations, the version we looked at before. And we saw that um, for a certain initial condition, I actually forget what it was, I think 10 foxes, 6 rabbits maybe, we ended up with a cycle like this. So what happens if we try some different initial conditions? So I can do that. For each one, each initial condition, I would get an x, sorry, a, a rabbit curve and a fox curve, and then I could plot them together like I did here. And if I did that, we would end up with this. And let me put some arrows on this. So all of these curves are going in the same direction. So this outer curve is the one we had before. Around and around it goes. With a different initial condition, we get a different cycle. And a different initial condition, we get a different cycle still. So each of these cycles, it turns out, is neutral. And what that means is that if we're in this cycle and I kill a couple rabbits, that, that sounds like a terrible thing to do. I don't kill a couple rabbits. I bring a couple more rabbits into the system because I like rabbits. Um, that would move us, say, from here out to here. 
if a couple foxes um, got got sick, that would that would move us down this way. The point is, a small if you're on this cycle, or let's say if you're on this cycle, a small change in the number of rabbits or foxes, um, you'll end up at a different cycle, a cycle that's nearby. You don't get pushed away. The rabbits and foxes don't take over the world, um, but you also don't get pulled back to this cycle. So this tells you that depending on the number of rabbits and foxes you have, you'll be in one of these cycles. Uh, it turns out that there's a um, neutral fixed point, an equilibrium point here in the middle, and you can solve that using algebra. That'll be one of the intermediate or advanced um, homework problems. So the main point is that this is an example of a phase portrait. It shows the, um, a number of different trajectories on a phase plane all at once, and it lets us summarize the behavior of a system. So we can see that um, there'll be cycles, and the cycles are neutral because the cycles don't get pushed away or, or pulled into each other. So that's the phase portrait for the Latka Volterra equations. There's one more example I'd like to discuss because it will introduce us to a new type of behavior. Uh, and it's a system of equations known as the Van der Paul equations. Here they are dx dt equals y, dy dt equals minus x plus 1 minus x squared times y. So it's a two-dimensional differential equation like we've been studying before. And um, one can solve this using Euler's method or something similar and get solution curves. So let's look at some of these solution curves. Here are x of t and y of t for one set of initial conditions. It looks like I chose an initial x of 3 and an initial y of minus 3. And y does this funny bend, but then pretty quickly it gets into some regular cycle. Um, regular in that it repeats. Um, looks like every 6 minutes or whatever these units are. It's not exactly a sine wave, but whatever this shape is, it repeats. Similar thing over here. These look like shark fins or something. Um, a little blip here, but then very quickly it settles into this cycle. Um, again, periodic, it looks like every six minutes it does the same thing. So we can plot these two curves on a phase plane and see what it looks like. Um, we're going to get some sort of cycle, a loop again. And here it is. Let me put some arrows on. So we started at x equals 3, y equals minus 3, and the trajectory on the phase plane gets pulled into this cycle and then it loops around. And this isn't a perfect oval, it's this sort of funny, almost trapezoidal sort of thing, parallelogram, I don't, I don't know what it is. It's this, it's this little blob. And the um, system and x and y cycle around. Okay, so um, this isn't really anything new because we've seen cycles for the Latka Volterra equation, but let's ask about their stability. Um, if I try a different initial condition, what do I get? So I can do that. Here are results for a different initial condition x of t and y of t. And I think this time I chose. 0.02 and 0.02 for both x and y. And um, a little blip, but again, we see those shark fins over here on the, um, uh, on the x curve. And on the y curve, we see whatever this shape is. It looks a little bit like a tangent function. Who knows what it is? It's this. It's this thing with a little bend in it, and then it repeats. So um, again, a little bit of transitory behavior here, but then it cycles into this periodic behavior. And let's take a look at that. We can plot x versus y, so get rid of time, on the phase plane. And we see that this is the shape. So we start here, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, and we cycle around do one little cycle, 
and then we're back to this shape. So this blobby parallelogrammy thing um, is an attractor. Why? Because multiple orbits get pulled towards it. The phase portrait for this um, would show several different initial conditions all getting pulled towards this. So let me show you what that looks like. Here it is. Again, I'll draw on a few arrows. Okay, so there are two different initial conditions. Um, there's the initial condition here. Um, and actually, I might have chosen a slightly different initial condition. This looks like it's even closer to the origin. I think I wanted to get an additional loop in there. So if I start with an initial condition very close to the origin, it spirals out and approaches this sideways parallelogram looking thing. If I start over here, this time I started with plus three, plus three for x and y. Again, I get pulled in very quickly to this shape. So this shape is an attractor. So we have an attracting cycle. And if I plotted additional initial conditions, um, right, that one gets pulled into the cycle. This one gets pulled into the cycle. It's always the same cycle, this sideways blob looking thing. So the point is that this is um, an attractor and it's a periodic attractor. It cycles around and you get pulled into it from the inside or from the outside. And this is sometimes called a limit cycle. I guess because in the limit of long time, everything tends to cycle in the same way. Um, and perhaps it's interesting because this isn't a perfect sinusoidal oscillation. It's not a circle or an oval. It's some funny sort of nonlinear type of thing. But anyway, the key result here is that we're seeing a new type of behavior in terms of these differential equations. We're seeing cycles and cycles that are attracting, sometimes known as a limit cycle. So far, we've seen that two-dimensional differential equations of this form can have fixed points, um, uh, equilibria that can be attracting or repelling, and an orbit could fly off to infinity. I haven't shown an example of that, but it's not hard to construct one. We can have cycles, neutral cycles, like in the lotka volterra equation, or an attracting cycle, uh, sometimes called a limit cycle, in the van der Paul equations that we just saw. But what about chaos? Can we have chaos in these two-dimensional systems? So let's think about this. I'll draw phase plane yet again. So let's remind ourselves of what chaos is. So chaos is a bounded, uh, is a deterministic dynamical system. Yep, we've got determinism. The orbits need to be bounded aperiodic and have sensitive dependence on initial conditions. So let's focus on those middle two criteria. An orbit that's bounded and is aperiodic. So let's say that we have some region that bounds the orbit. Maybe just sort of arbitrarily, I don't know, I'll put a, put a bound here in purple. So let's say we want our orbit to stay within that region, just sort of choosing it arbitrarily just for the sake of argument. So can we have an aperiodic phase line, uh, aperiodic trajectory in here? Well, you can already see that that's going to be pretty hard. So I want something that, um, let's see, so it can't can't ever cycle around, right? Because that would not be um, aperiodic, that's periodic. So we can't have that. And now I've messed up my graph. So let's ignore that and choose a different color. I'll do red. Okay, so now um, I want to wander around here. And um, I can never cross the line. I can't ever intersect this line. If I did intersect, like I did here in blue, then because of determinism, I have to repeat. 
if you get to this point and you move around, you get to that point again, you have to do the same thing. That's what determinism means. So I'm in this bounded region and I can't um, ever cross. And so I'm imagining this trajectory moving around. Who knows what this would look like in terms of x of t and y of t. And um, what I'm trying to illustrate here is that as I draw this line, I'm making it harder and harder for me or for this line to, um, uh, to keep moving around without bumping into it. If it bumps into it, game over, it's periodic. It's no longer, uh, it can't be aperiodic. So the fact that we're never allowed to cross a line because of determinism, which discussed in the previous video, limits the behavior that's possible. A way I like to think of this is, imagine you're painting a floor and you're painting a floor red for some reason. Maybe, I don't know why I'd paint a floor red, but you're painting the floor red. So here you are painting, but you can't cross the line that you paint. And so if you kind of do it wrong, you're boxing yourself into a corner and you sort of have less and less room to maneuver. So in any event, the question is, is chaos possible? The answer to this question is no. And this was proved, I think around 1900, by um, Poincaré and then uh, the theorem was strengthened a little bit by Bendixson. So this is known as a Poincaré-Bendixson theorem. Let's see if I can spell that. Which says um, bounded aperiodic behavior is not possible for 2D differential equations of this form. So I, I hope this seems almost intuitive that the restriction that we can only draw in a box and we can never cross the line means that it's not possible for two-dimensional differential equations to show aperiodic behavior. It's not immediately obvious, maybe that's why there's something to prove here, and it's, it's a theorem and not just a totally obvious thing. I suppose one could imagine a curve that snakes in some incredibly intricate fractal way, um, but presumably those are eliminated mathematically um, if we restrict ourselves to this sort of thing. So the bottom line is that we can't see chaotic behavior in two-dimensional differential equations. They're more interesting than one-dimensional differential equations because we can see cycles, um, neutral cycles and attracting cycles and these funny nonlinear cycles like we saw in the Van der Paul equations. But chaos is not possible. For um, a differential equation to show chaotic behavior will have to be in dimensions higher than two. So we'll talk about that in um, a subsequent subunit of, uh, of this section.